In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You're very welcome to the Brendan Option, courtesy of Immaculata Productions. I'm Father Brendan Kilcoin. If you like our work, maybe the subscribe button, uh, that's helpful. Throw us a few, a few quid on, on Patreon or PayPal or however, that would be helpful. And we're really beginning to appreciate and enjoy the comments. And they're making us very much feel that a little community is gathering around this work. Maybe, you know, if you're not in a position to contribute financially or whatever, uh, you know, a thoughtful comment, some constructive criticism, uh, that would be, that would be just super. Okay, anything you can do for us. The Ackle Put, uh, John F. Dean, used to tell the story of a day uh, when he was growing up, when he was a small boy, that uh, he and his friends had, uh, as small boys will sometimes do, ha- had spent some time being, uh, you know, playing rather cruel tricks on a cat and uh, teasing, teasing the animal and generally being fairly beastly to the animal and... Uh, then tiring of their sport, to the relief of the cat, no doubt, they had decided to go down to the beach, strip off and go for a swim. Which they did. And he said he swam out a little and suddenly had the sensation that a an ocean liner was passing him in the water to his appalled gaze there passed the enormous body uh, of of a huge shark now he was lucky uh, it was what's called a basking shark they're really like a whale they don't eat people they eat plankton but he, he said it gave him a tremendous sense of shame at what they'd been doing earlier It terrified him and it gave him a sense of how easily nature could just reach out and swat him out of existence. I I I think one of our biggest problems, how will I put this? The church is often accused of having a problem with nature, right? And it's true. Especially in its early centuries, the church had a terrible problem fighting tendencies within it, which gradually broke away into the so-called Gnostic sects, who had a problem with nature. They regarded the material world as evil. St. Augustine started out with, with these people, the Manichaeans. They had a similar view. The material world was evil, nature was evil, and all the rest of it. But the church doesn't believe that. Nature is fallen, which is a different thing. Nature is basically good. The church actually may understand nature rather better than some of her nature-loving critics. I would just put it to you today that some of the most insidious sins that are occurring in church life at the moment, insidious because they are socially acceptable, Now, insidious comes from a Latin word meaning an ambush, a sudden attack. You know, so to be to be ambushed, you must be off your guard. You're off your guard because these things are acceptable. I think some of the most insidious of these things arise from a disrespect for nature and it was Peter Hitchens lately who who commented that there really was very little point in getting worked up. Uh, some conservative Catholics uh, getting worked up, for instance, about questions of gay marriage. He said the the pass was sold. The city betrayed. The gates opened to the enemy when heterosexual marriage was allowed to fall into such disrepair as it now is, is that there was a major crisis of heterosexual relations already. So the the battle was well lost by the time the other questions came up. 
it's quite common now for young Catholics, and they are Catholics. They're Catholics. They're Catholics. I didn't say they weren't. It's quite common now for young Catholics to live together before they get married. It's quite common to the extent that a young couple will casually refer to it when they're preparing, when they're doing their marriage prep with you, when they're filling out their forms and all the rest. Of them. They quite casually refer to the fact that they're living together. I don't know how to say this without coming across like Savonarola on speed. I, I, I just don't know how to say this otherwise. There was an old Archbishop of Canterbury, I think it was after the Profumo scandal, who I remember when he was interviewed said, well, well, he said, you know, adultery is... And everyone was waiting. Adultery is... Adultery is a bad thing. Anticlimax. Actually, it, was, it wasn't a bad... It was good as, it was good a stab at it as any. Fornication is a sin. It may be enjoyable, but it's not good for you. Because every mortal sin that you commit, and if it's done freely, it's a mortal sin, because the matter is grave. Every mortal sin that you commit darkens your conscience. The more often you commit it, you create a habit, you darken your conscience further. You, the voice of God becomes becomes fainter. Uh, you you push off into deep water. The voice of your conscience becomes gradually st- gradually quieter. You stop hearing. You're becoming narcotized. You're you are you are like a boxer who's taken drugs. You don't know when to go down. This business of cohabiting is much more insidious than it may seem because it is institutionalized fornication. Now, all right, you can say to me, you can say to me, well, we're not going to have sex, right? We're going to live together, but we're not going to have sex. But you do need to learn, you know, I I mean, you don't know somebody until you live with them. The first thing I say to you back is that marriage is a risk. It has always been a risk. No, 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 no. Let's say this with the respect it deserves. It's a bloody huge risk. And it always has been, and it always will be. And there is no use in trying, as there is no use in trying to abolish tragedy in life, there is no use in trying to abolish risk. It is a condition of living. If you don't want risk, become a stone then you won't have to worry about risk. Okay? That's the first thing I'm going to... The second thing I'm going to say is absolutely, yeah, you live with somebody, you, you, you get to know them. But if you're living with somebody to whom you're sexually attracted, and if you're not sexually attracted to him or her, then probably you do need to revise the whole thing about getting married. I mean, what do I know? I just sell a little priest. I mean, what do I know, right? It would just occur to me that that would be useful. Useful? And if you're sexually attracted to that somebody, that is huge. It is powerful. Nature is not sentimental. And you have no respect. Hey, all right, you, 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 you're going to come back. You think I'm, I'm saying to you, you have no respect for God, you sinner. You, you're, no, I'm not going to say that to you. I, I, I'm a sinner, okay? Right? I'm just, you're drinking weed killer, but, you know, fair enough. Slug away. But, like... You know, some people like a little weed killer in their brandy. And not only that, but you're passing the drinks around. So you got, you, you, you're literally in what's called technically a near occasion of sin, right? Which would be a pretty near. I mean, you know, it's going to be, you know, we're talking arrived. And then on top of that, everyone knows you're living together. Everyone can see it. So you're demoralizing the other believers. You're giving bad example. I think I've made an argument for its being bad example. You may not agree with me, but I beg you to consider it. There you are. You're you're living with this person to whom you with whom you're passionately in love, wildly in love. I mean, if you don't want to have sex, you must have had a. I'm speaking to men. You must have had a a very tragic event crossing a barbed wire fence or something. And 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 uh, I know I'm a countryman. I, I I can't avoid being you know rustic. 
So sex is going to happen. I mean, you want to be made of stone for sex not to happen. And, the, and, and you're creating a situation in which this can happen stably. So what you've done is you've put the whole thing on rollers. You've, you've set up a laboratory. You've, you've, you've created the conditions for this. It's like a, it's, it's a greenhouse of the passions. Well, don't be surprised if something grows that eats you. Will you stop, will you stop being so disrespectful to nature? Stop messing about. You know, you don't think nature is formidable? The next time your little dog is, is having the dinner, you reach down and pull away his bowl, right? Yeah, you just reach down and pull away his bowl. You'll be pulling your own pints with a hook. Now, I'm just saying to you, you know, if you want to go on like this, you know, I remember that story by John F. Dean. He told it to us when we were schoolboys. He came to visit us in St. Charlotte's back in the 70s. I've never forgotten it. He's a poem about it. That you want to mess with nature, you go and mess with nature. And then you end up messing with God. All right, mess with God. That's a lot of messing. That's a lot of messing. And then, oh, no, 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 but we're, you know, we're going to go to church. And oh, so you're going to add sacrilege to it too. Actually, what the hell? What, what, what is this? Some sort of like, a, yeah, you, you're like a cocktail waiter in hell. Okay. What did you put the whole lot in? Shaken and, and that stirred. Come on. Get some respect. Be reasonable. Okay. What you're entering into is an, an incredible adventure in nature and in supernature. It is an incredible adventure. There are real dangers. There are real things that can go wrong. There are real terrors because there are always real terrors where there is great treasure to be found. Will you listen to the wisdom of the church? Listen to the elders. Give, give them ear. Consider what they have to say. Walk the safer path until you're ready to go together with the blessing of God into the adventure and face the dangers. It's not that I don't want you to swim. I just want you to come back when the swim is over. That's all. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.